bounty hunters? Are they really vigilantes who hunt fugitives like prey for a cash prize? I'm Anthony Padilla, and I'm gonna find out the truth from bounty hunters themselves. Hello, Zeke. How you doing? Frank. How you doing? How you doing? By the way, this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. When I told people I was gonna be interviewing bounty hunters today, they're like, what the f for real? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people know what bounty hunters do, you know? It's just yeah. like, oh, you mean Boba Fett. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> people don't know exactly. How, how did you even come across my, my, my channel? Bro, you have a video of you kicking a door down on YouTube. Bail bar! Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess I went viral. <laughs> Wait, how many hunts have you done? Do you have any kind I, of like I probably about I've captured probably about 500 people. Over how many years? I've been doing this for about 10 years now, yeah. That's like one person a week. Uh, yeah, yeah, roughly. Yeah. <laughs> what is a bounty hunter? I feel like there's so many different definitions. So, so really a bounty hunter stems from a bail bondsman, which I'm a bail bondsman. Okay. All right, so we loan people money to get out of jail who can't afford it. Right. So say if someone has a 10,000, 10% bond and they can't afford to pay the court a thousand bucks, uh -huh. they call a bondsman, uh -huh. which is me. We'll put up 10 grand, we'll finance the, the thousand bucks. So say they put down 500 and make payments on it. Uh -huh. So then we'll bail them out of jail. Now, there's a contract set in place that they have to appear to court. If they right. don't go to court, the court's gonna contact me and say, hey, Frank, you got X amount of days to find this person or we're gonna take your money. And how would you describe yourself? Basically a highly trained pirate. I mean, uh, if you look at things realistically, um, we go after things of value uh -huh. and we get paid for doing it. You go after the, instead of the booty, it's the bounty. Exactly. I mean, you have 4,000 arrests under your belt? Yes. 30 plus years of experience? Yes. And you, you must have done, you've done everything. Pretty much, been there, done that. I'm like the the Mike Lowry of uh, Bounty Hunt. You seen Bad Boys? Uh -huh. I like I like to dress nice fashion. Uh. I'm real cool, urban. I think I bring the, the freshness, the urban side to the actual industry, man, you know? You're like a bounty hunter, but like a cool, fresh bounty yeah, hunter. Yeah, the freshest, yeah, fresh bounty hunter, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you describe the difference between a bounty hunter and law enforcement? Basically, I'm an insurance agent. I only have arrest authority over people that I bond out or mm -hmm. other defendants that other bondsmen bond out. That's it. I'm not out here fighting crime. I'm not Batman. If I see you committing a crime, I mean, you shouldn't do it, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna stop you. How do you make money in all this? You have to find them. Think about it. Oh. I'm putting up money to the court for these people, and if we don't find them, the company loses money. There's no financial gain from that. So. We'll sue the co-signers to try to redeem some of the money. If I don't find them, I lose money. Because my interpretation of what a bounty hunter was, mm -hmm. a very educated uh, interpretation, not ignorant at all, was that there was like, I don't know, a website or some kind of black market that you go to and there's like <laughs> bounties over people's heads and you're like, mm, that one looks easy and it could, it could land me 10K. I'm gonna I'm gonna get that person. No, it's not like that whatsoever. Uh, yeah, it's, that's, that's TV. Oh. <laughs> The media misinformed me? Yeah, they lied to you. <laughs> there are people who just sp specifically hunt. Oh. I am a bondsman and a bounty hunter. Oh, okay, that's so there's So you can just be a bounty hunter and you don't have to worry about that aspect of it. You oh. just, you're just hunting people. But me, I'm a bondsman and I'm a bounty hunter because I hunt my own people. Oh. So that's, that's the difference. So if I wasn't a bondsman and I just wanted to hunt for people, then yeah, I would just be around let me get this guy. Oh, this is a good one. Let me go find this person. Mm. Do you remember the first person you ever caught? We had never done this before. And uh, somebody had, a bondsman, had called our protection service and said that uh, he had a bail skip. So the bondsman invited us to his office and he explained to us exactly how bail works. Told us if we brought him in, he'd give us four grand. So we drove over to the house where the defendant was known to live. We banged on the door and some poor woman, she was pregnant, opened the door and we said, where is he? You know, he jumped bail. We got to get him back into court. And she kind of gave him up that he was at the local bar and we saw him at the bar and there was a little bit of a scuffle. Police walked over and said, what's going on here? He said, oh, this guy jumped bail. I said, oh, you're bounty hunters? And my partner and I looked at each other and said, yeah, we're bounty hunters. I said, all right, get him out of here. So we hooked him, went and collected our check. Mm -hmm. And... Um, 
We said, you know, there's got to be a market for this. You know, at first in my career, I liked the challenge of the hunt. And then the hunt starts to become very addicting, like hunting humans. You know, once you hunt humans, you'll never hunt an animal again. You sound like a vampire. A little. <laughs> I've been known to sleep upside down with a cape. Okay. It's my first ever hunt. I was in Hampton, Virginia. Um, a bondsman gave me the opportunity to find somebody he couldn't find. Anyway, I found the guy at a hotel. It was probably the most weird setup situation I've ever seen in my life. So I bang on the door. He doesn't open. I say, open up or I'm going to kick it in. The guy's completely ass naked. Mm. There's a laptop with porn. Mm. There's a uh, there's a Snickers bar. There's a cantaloupe. Yes. Th yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. I don't want to know how the... <laughs> I don't think I want to know how those are related. <laughs> To those details, <laughs> I don't know. So you've seen some shit. I've seen some shit, man, mm -hmm. yeah. Because then I'm like, get on the ground, and he's naked, and I'm, get up, put your clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> then get on the ground. Then get on the ground, put your pants on, <laughs> then put your hands behind. It was, it was crazy. I was so confused, and I, I didn't know what to do. It. <laughs> you're, oh, you're like, oh, this is bounty hunting. Yeah, I said, oh, God. He was, he was like, what? What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what to do with my hands. You're like, <laughs> grab the clothes. Yeah, just put your clothes on, man. Yeah. So that was uh, that was my first time. What is your most memorable hunt? We're tracking this guy, uh -huh. and he's six ten. What? Six ten, 150 pounds. What? Yeah. Right. Was that Slenderman? That was unbelievable. And it's been about a week, and we keep searching and searching, and we we hit the house. And uh, the girlfriend is the co-signer on the bond. Okay. And we said, you know, where is he? And she's she's not saying anything. And, and then she says, points to under the house, right? We go to uh, where you go under the house in the closet and everything's perfect. You know, like hasn't been moved and we can't figure it out. So we, we move the shoes and we pull the thing away and we're under the house and we're searching and I mean, there's only about this much room. We come up back through the hatch and we said, you know, we can't find him. He says, he's down there. So we go back down and we're searching on our bellies, you know, with guns and way over in the corner under the dirt, we see a part of a boot sticking up, right? And we say, hey, you know, you gotta come out, man. We're gonna take you out of here. Nothing. We go back under the house and the police are talking to him now from one of the side vents. They said, hey man, you gotta come out. These bounty hunters are gonna drag you out of there. So out of the dirt comes this guy, <laughs> right? Like a mummy. God, Night of the living dead. Oh, for sure. We drag him out, he's covered in dirt. We sit him down and we say, hey, what's going on here? He specialized in evasion. He trained troops on how to evade the enemy. What happens after you arrest someone? Based on where we're at, we have 48 hours to bring them into in front of a judge mm -hmm. or into law hands of law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So basically what we do is we take them in and we book them at the county jail. And they're just like thrown into your car? Yeah, we take them in the car. Uh -huh. We can't put them in the trunk anymore like the old days. You used to be able to do that? Absolutely. That seems a little fucked up. Not really. <laughs> Depends who you ask? Exactly. Okay. Is there a huge sense of danger with, with each of these hunts? Oh, man. You you can die at any yeah. moment. I mean, you just never know what's gonna happen. Is that why you are buff as and you're like, I'm intimidating and you're not gonna fuck with me? I, I stay in shape. <laughs> now, but uh, this this is not gonna stop any bullets, uh. but it will make a normal human being second guess trying you. Right. I mean, not everybody's walking around fearless, Chuck Norris, like, you know, most people are gonna be like, okay, he's a pretty big guy. I, man, this could go sideways. Right. I'm gonna just chill, uh. you know, so it helps. And then I, each door I kick, I don't, you never know. It could be my last door. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a risky business, but I have a good sense and a good intuition to when danger is kind of near sometimes. Is your, like, is your adrenaline pumping the entire time? It is, like, it is. I could die, this could be the last day it I wake is. up? Every single time, my stomach is <laughs> crazy because when we're about to, when we're hunting and we're getting yeah. close to finding the guy, the guys I hunt, I'm like, I always have to use the bathroom for me. <laughs> <laughs> like getting some nervous shit. Yeah, going. Like I always have to go pee. Like no matter what, we walking up to the. I gotta go. And I walk off the camera. And I got. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, you, you gotta have nerves. You gotta. Bet. You gotta have. Nerves. You got to. If you don't have fear, then you don't have any caution. If you have no caution, you're just going in places blindsided. You don't care. I've I've. 
been very cautious and, and been in many, many dangerous and violent situations. You just kind of need to know how to, you know, handle yourself. Do you remember a time when your adrenaline and nerves were going the most? Oh, sure, all the time. I mean, we've had a couple of shootouts mm. and, uh, you know, we've gone after some seriously dangerous people mm. and, you know, it's gonna happen. It's just, you have to realize when you get up in the morning and you do what we do, Yeah. you know, you may come home, you may not. And that's just the roll of the dice. And are you able to stay cool under those circumstances? Well, we would hope, especially if you've been in the game long enough, but you know, yeah. when you're, sometimes when you're training young people, yeah, um, it's hard to convey that to them and it, the situation can escalate and you have to make sure that you handle it as quick as possible so that they get proper training. So, you know, the pros will, the pros will try and keep it calm. You just under the, the stress and, and all these other elements of your job that is required for this job, you've experienced even some health issues, health issues. Sure. I mean, you know, look, we're, we're not machines yeah. and uh, we have to be maintenance. Mm -hmm. But when you continually put the body through tremendous amounts of stress for long periods of time, you're going to develop health issues, whether it's psych issues or physical ailments. It's just a part of the game. Mm -hmm. You know, we stay up way too long and we don't eat properly. And, uh, you know, this has been going on for 45 years. It's not like yesterday. Stress is necessary. If you don't have any sort of feeling or emotion, you're just fearless, you're going to wind up getting yourself hurt or somebody else hurt. And have you experienced that? I have, yeah. This happened when I was first getting in the business. Um, I was young and I went to Detroit. I was new. I was out there looking for a guy and I thought that me having a badge on would protect me somehow and it doesn't right. there's people that don't care about that right um guys came they said hey you got 10 minutes to get off this block or we're gonna come back and we're gonna shoot you and at that time like <laughs> you know i'm thinking i'm superman you know fresh green so i didn't pay them no attention mm. and they came back in 10 minutes and they started shooting and i'll never forget i was running for my life it had to be it was like five ten minutes running through abandoned houses yeah, it was it was scary man oh shit. yeah um Thank oh. God, everything was okay. And, uh, you know, I'm still here today, but that was a scare for me. Yeah. Did you always want to be a bounty hunter? Um, Were you like, someday when I grow up, I'm going to hunt? No, I wanted to play sports and I went to school for nursing. And when I was in school, I was like, what am I going to do next? Football didn't pan out. I'm like, what am I going to do? I want to do something still athletic, mm. still I can be out and about. I want to work in a cubicle. And, um, I looked this up and I was like, what is this? You know, it was mm -hmm. kind of like a Marshall, but not really. And I just, it was my niche. I just did it the first time and mm -hmm. I was just a natural at it. You know, I was blessed to find my niche at an early age. Mm. So. And it was like, I want to serve justice or what, what made you want to become? Like you were a nurse, you know, out there <laughs> helping people. So, you know, everybody knew, everybody knows bounty hunting from one particular person. Mm. Um, and I see, I'm sure you know who that is. <laughs> are you are you not willing to? I'm say not dropping that? names. So <laughs> he has enough clout. Yeah, so, yeah. Woof woof. Let's go. So <laughs> so everybody knew this guy, mm. and I knew I was like, wow, I could bring a different flavor to this. Mm. You know, especially to my community, they've never seen this in the capacity like I could do. I could bring some fun, some exciting, some urban to it, and that he kind of. I'm not gonna lie, it motivated me to do it my way. I fell into it organically. Um, I started as a uh, protection agent. And with that, we had some death threats on people. So we conducted uh, threat analysis investigations to figure out who the threat was. And then I got that call, that bounty hunter call, you know, and our skills got kicked up another notch because we're tracking bad guys. This mm -hmm. is basically, you know, tracking bad guys. And, and um, just kind of fell into the niche. When you say bad guys, is that your assessment of them being bad or are they bad because they have, like, you know, who, who's to say what's bad and what's not? Yeah, I mean, we're not a judge or a jury, you know? I don't judge people. That's, I leave that up to whoever. But um, I know that they are fugitives. So when you're out there hunting, you're not wondering if they're guilty or if they're innocent? Nope, don't care. Really? Nope, mm -hmm. don't care. If you found out that someone was innocent somehow, mid-hunt, would you be like, eh, they're innocent? No, nope. really? they're a fugitive. Mm. They're a paycheck to me. Some people might be like, but they're humans and they're innocent. It's not my job. My mm. job is to hunt them down and bring them back to the judicial system. That's my obligation to the court. What makes a good bounty hunter? I've mastered one thing that 
most people in this industry don't. Patience. Mm. You have to have patience. You have to be able to sit and watch a house for days. Pee in that jug. You can't leave because if you leave, they might have pulled up or left. Mm. And a lot of people cannot do that. Think mm. of, you think you could sit in a house, I mean in a car, for about 10 hours and just pee in a jug? You can't move. You have little snacks. You want to come on a ride along like, and do like it? Like Cheez-Its or yeah. what? Whatever snacks like you're into. Fish. What are you into? Uh, you know, a little, a little uh, sugar-free uh, Gatorade. And, sugar-free uh, Gatorade? Yeah. That won't keep you going too long, but yeah. Right. <laughs> you're going to need some sugar. Right. <laughs> you think you could do that for 10, 10 uh, hours? No. No? It's a, I think it depends how much, uh, how many dollar signs. How many, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that your incentive, sitting in a car peeing in a jug for 10 hours? No, it's more so if I don't sit here for 10 hours, I'm going to lose this. Right. So I have to sit there and wait for them and stalk them. Right. Yeah, we're professional stalkers, really. You're a professional yeah. stalker. Like should, I re should I name, I spent a day with professional stalker. Professional stalker, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like to make it, it's, it's fun, man. You got to make yeah. some fun out of it. A good bounty hunter... I think has to be passionate. Mm. You have to be passionate about what you're doing because sometimes you can have a lot of caseload. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, when other people are on vacation, you're working. So passionate, being passionate, and uh, being ethical. So ethics do come into play. It's not just get the job done. No, for sure. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity to do the the wrong thing when you're in the field. Mm. And I've seen a lot of goes, guys go by the wayside. Have you been tempted to go to the dark side? Um, not really. Um, I don't necessarily need to. Mm. You know, I've, uh, I've done very well in my arena um, for many, many years. So um, there's no need to, to go there. I have to look at myself every morning in the mirror when I wake up. And I got to love who I see. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. And if you're doing shit like that, um, you, you're not loving yourself. What is your daily life like? You said that you're working seven days a week, like you're almost Around the always clock. working. Around the clock. Mm -hmm. We're working all the time. The phones are ringing. It could be, you know, in, in a couple minutes, we could be in another country. Yeah, I mean, you told me, you're like, I'm going to put my phone on silent, but I could get an emergency call Absolutely. and I might have to take it in the middle of it. Absolutely. All phone calls all night. Mm. You know, they have to, the problems have to be addressed as they're happening and delegated. So has that prevented you from having really deep connections with people because you're always ready to, to, to go at any moment? Sure, never married, no children. I would never want to put someone through that. Right. You know? Yeah. And uh, it takes a special person to understand that. So it, uh, and you never want to bring that type of, I don't want to call uh, issues into a family. It's mostly doing research, investigating, talking to different people, sitting on the internet, looking who these people talk to, what are they doing, what do they like to eat. So you're kind of like a PI. Like. Yeah, yeah. I got to find out every little detail. Mm. They smoke these type of cigarettes. He drinks this beer. He likes to go to Katie's house on m Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. Like, I go deep into these people's lives so I can find them. What do you do with that info? I come up with a plan to somehow either set them up or, or find them. How do you set them up? A lot of times for my, my setups, I'll set people up with women. Like they're coming to think they're about to meet this beautiful, blonde, nice body, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's me. You're like, you're like <laughs> you just got catfished, bitch. Not long blonde, but I got long dreads. Yeah, it's, <sighs> it's easier like that, it's safer. Um, so I like to just set people up, you know. You catch a guy with his pants down, he's, he's vulnerable. Do you have any shocking takeaways from any of your hunts, anything that like, taught you something that you take into your everyday life. Hey honey, I forgot to mention this episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey. Honey, of course, is the easy way to save when you're shopping on your iPhone or your computer. It's a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and it applies the best one that it finds to your cart so you no longer have to stare at that empty discount code box at checkout because if Honey finds a working coupon, a little Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupon. And Honey supports over 30,000 stores online ranging from tech to popular fashion brands and yes, food delivery, so you're set. So if you're anything like me after this episode, you're gonna sit down on your phone, 
You're gonna pull up your favorite food delivery service and you're gonna check out with Honey and save some money. And I might've already said this, but Honey doesn't just work on desktops, it works on your iPhone too. All you have to do is activate on Safari on your phone and save on the go. But if you wanna do yourself a solid and also support this series, get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Padilla. Again, it's free. And if you go to joinhoney.com slash Padilla, you'll be directly supporting yeah, you guessed it, this series. And I can't go without thanking Dipsy for sponsoring this episode. Dipsy is an app full of short audio stories designed by women for women. Right, women? So what Dipsy does is they bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and characters and new content is released every week. So in between listening to your favorite stories, you can always find something new to explore. Dipsy also has sleep stories, wellness sessions, and now they also offer written stories. So you're set no matter how you like to consume these delectable little morsels. And before I spent today with viewers and listeners of the completely uncensored podcast version of the show, Dipsy's offering an extended 30 day free trial. When you go to dipsystories.com slash Padilla, that's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash P-A-D-I-L-L-A. Now, back to the world of bounty hunters. Do you have any shocking takeaways from any of your hunts, anything that like taught you something that you take into your everyday life? Don't judge people, you know, don't judge. Because people, you never know what someone's going through, mm. you know, whatsoever. So I never judge someone, you know, no matter what I see, what type of living conditions they're in, mm. I just don't judge and I'm always open ear, have an open heart. People who contact me and say, hey Tank, you saved my life, you know, mm. just for coming and speaking to them, you know, just them seeing us come and do our job, it somehow touched them, you know? So mm -hmm. I don't judge people, I talk to people, and I always try to have some type of dialogue with people if I can, mm -hmm. you know, because you can touch people, man. This is a this is a, power, a powerful position that we have. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to touch people in a positive manner and better help them some way, man. You Use your platform, use your authority in a good way. Demonstration time, I'm gonna have you Spartan kick down my door. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> where? where? <laughs> I, I got to stretch. <laughs> the fact that you were so down with it kind of scares me. You think you could kick a door in? What? You think you could kick a door me? in? Me? Yeah. No, no, oh, I don't. Man. No. Nah. I think you could. You think I could? Oh, yeah. You got the look, too. Bro, have you seen those thighs? <laughs> you got Chun-Li thighs. Oh, man. A, a good donkey kick, you'd be good. How many doors have you kicked down in your life? Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of RIPs to doors out here, so... Oh. I don't know, I've, I've pretty much single-handedly probably raised the stock of Home Depot. <laughs> they they should be writing me a check. Quite a few, hundreds. Well, you know, it's funny, not funny, but ironic yeah. that the penal code says that if you kick someone's door in and they're there, that you're not responsible for the damage. I poke fun of it because people like to see it, but you yeah. know, I'm not really out here just trying to kick people's stuff in. I mean, right. I right. do want to have to. Is it kind of fun to kick down a door? It is, <laughs> it is. I, I'm not gonna lie, to you. it's just like, I was like, don't make me do this. Please don't. Yeah. And, and, and then they, they make me, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, since you made me. <laughs> it's, it's a drilling, I'm not gonna lie. It is. I'd rather knock on the door though and they answer. Have you ever hurt yourself kicking in a door? Yeah, I, I uh, hyper extended my knee once. Mm. Yeah, it was a steel door. I kept kicking it for about 15 minutes. And I was like, this is I, game over. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. That's too long to kick a door. It, my knee was sore. I had to go ice afterwards. Has your knee ever been the same? Um, I, I look at it different. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you've been through so much. I babied a little bit, yeah. so now I try to use this one more. You have a YouTube channel documenting all this stuff. Yeah. Do you have people watching your content and then therefore knowing how to manipulate you based on the way that they see you interact with people? Oh yeah, so I watch what I put out on YouTube just because a lot of times the people that I'm looking for are watching the videos. Yeah. So I let them see what I want them to see. Got it, so you look at it through the lens of yeah. this is what will be uh, consumed by them. Yeah, so it's mine. So yeah. yeah, you might think I'm doing something or think I don't know something right. because this is what you're watching. Right. But no, that's not the case whatsoever. I want you to see this. You're like, bro, I cut out the stuff I don't want you to see. Exactly. And, they don't understand that. So, yeah. yeah. I watch what I put out just because, like I said, if I'm, because this stuff's real and it's live. So, it's actively going on when I'm looking for these people. So, I can't let them see certain stuff and I have to let them see certain stuff. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's strategic. 
I feel like when people look at people that apprehend fugitives or criminals or, you know, whatever you want to label these types of people, they assume that there's a lot of black and white thinking where it's like, that's a criminal. That person deserves no respect. How do you get away from that black and white thinking of like bad versus good? Yeah, I don't, I don't assume anything. I just, you're just a normal person until you show me something else. Mm. You know, if you are cool and calm, then I'm going to give you the same respect. So, yeah, I don't, I don't just assume. These people might, yeah, you don't know what people are going through. Why are they committing these crimes? Some of them have bad drug problems. They're not bad people. They're just, you know, drugs change people. They turn them into some something completely different. They're not mm. yourself. So, um, you know, you got to understand that part of it too. You have to, you have to have some type of empathy. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't. I'm not just a cruel guy. I, I typically care about people. So you've seen some very potentially dark things, for sure, in this industry. How do you? cope with that well i think we're we have some power um i can tell you that when i see abused children in these situations um they're going to child protective services i mean i have zero i mean zero room when it comes to children just turns my stomach it kind of turns me into a different person you know uh, they're going i'm not going to let them be subjected to this you know I've, I've went into places where the children are fine and the children are being treated well they just happen to have a an idiot for a spouse or a relative or somebody staying there it's not their fault mm -hmm. but when we go in and we see that children are being abused that we have to step in i feel like i kind of see you feeling something are you imagining a specific scene no oh, it happens you know yeah it happens it's unfortunate but it's part of what's uh, what's going on you know and that's mm -hmm. We have to do uh, what we think is best. If you're a human being, you know you don't want children uh, abused like that. I just, I just imagine it must be emotionally. Oh yeah, quite it's quite heavy. It's horrible. Yeah. Horrible. You know. Yeah. But we do what we do. Has working in this field changed your mindset about life? I mean, it's hard sometimes when you're dealing with negativity all the time. It's hard to see the positive, but positivity. I think dwarfs out the negativity. If you're searching for positive, you'll find it. If you're searching and dwelling on negativity, you'll certainly find it. Right. So in what we do, we it's a balancing act, you know? If there's anyone watching who wants to become a bounty hunter themselves, is there anything that you want to say to them? Run, run and don't look back. <laughs> no, actually, um, just know that if you get into this type of arena, it's long hours and um, very, very diligent work and not as glamorous as people think. Do you recommend it? Not really. If you want to become a bounty hunter or some type of police officer, get into it for the right reasons. Don't get into this because you want to carry a gun or you want to have some type of authority over people. So just come into it with a pure heart and understand the position that you're going to be in and you can really touch people's lives. It's, you know, also, you got a job, a duty to do, but understand you can impact people in a good way. So don't get into this just to be a cowboy because it will backfire on you. And I will get mad. I will come for you. And sometimes they want they, you know, 10 minutes of fame. Oh, really? So they yeah. want to be caught on your YouTube channel because they know that they'll, they'll Man, be on it. I catch people, they're giving, they're giving shout outs to, to their social media. and all this. You cut it out or you leave it in? I, I cut it out. <laughs> You're like, don't some use people, my channel to some promote people, yourself. Some people, though, I'll let it stay in. But yeah, some, yeah, man, it, it's like they're ready. A lot of times when they, people know I'm coming, they're super theatrical <laughs> on camera. Today, uh, I'm going to be brought to jail. <laughs> Definitely the camera brings out different sides of people. Man. Yeah. yeah. 